ladies and sis. I'm your host, Ama, and I'm just so happy to introduce you to acclaimed author and physician, multi-talented, <laughs> Kwe Kwate. <laughs> Kwe, thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's uh, good to be here with you. Kwe, I, I'm, I'm a fan of your books. I'm a fan of your books because you write about the tangible elements of the African society. And not every author has the ability to capture that essence, and you have. Thank you. So before we even get to your books, tell me how a doctor <laughs> ventured into the life of writing. I would say that my urge to write came long before I be, uh, wanted to become a doctor. And I think it, it sort of stayed in the back of my consciousness mm -hmm. Uh, through my training and residency and then it sort of re-emerged as after I had a little bit more time to sit back and consider <laughs> my life once I'd, I graduated from medicine. Now you have described your childhood mm -hmm. that you, your parents uh, were both lecturers in Ghana. Your mom is African-American, yes. your dad is from Ghana yes. and you grew up in Ghana right, right up to university yes. and you've described your home as a treasure trove <laughs> of books yeah. and, and inspiration. Elaborate that to me. There were books. There were books everywhere, and I I don't know if um, my mom and dad had some kind of premonition about what sort of effect that would have on one of us. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe me. I don't know if they chose me, but um, it, it's almost as though it couldn't be quite a coincidence that there were so many books fiction and non-fiction everywhere. Uh, if I can borrow a, a phrase from Hannibal Lecter <laughs> in oh. Silence of the Lambs, <laughs> he says, you covet what you see every day. And, you know, th the books that were around me were kind of like a reality mm -hmm. to me. Are you talking about uh, being surrounded by books and you, you end up writing what you're surrounded by? Yes, yes. Uh, it makes me wonder, what were you surrounded by to come up with <laughs> Wife of God, <laughs> talking about the spiritual realm, talking about things that really make me quite nervous. So what, what, what was your foray into the spiritual realm, into the juju world, into mm. the voodoo aspect of Africa right, right, that right. inspired you to write this phenomenal book, Wife of God? Well, I, when I was in Ghana as, as a kid, um, we were exposed to a lot of these stories of, of juju mm -hmm. and things like that. And I, I think I used to dismiss them out of hand, um, especially since I was so scientific minded, you know, I was, I was always into the science. And I used to dismiss them and either, either think they were just funny or ridiculous. And um, in fact, there was this one story when I was growing up about some juju going around in a crowd making people, uh, men lose their, <laughs> their, their, that's right, their potency. <laughs> I you think probably that story recurs every 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and men, you're sitting in buses, men are like, don't touch me, you can't touch me. <laughs> if they touch you, you're going to become impotent, right? Yeah, so there was that, and you know, that, that was just amusing. But I in an in a ironic way, it took me, you know, coming out of, this, uh, out of Ghana to the States to sort of take an, a second look um, at, you know, spiritualism and the effect on behavior and the health of people. I don't dismiss it so readily anymore. You have a very interesting upbringing. I mentioned that your mom is African American. Right. Your dad was from Ghana. Right. They met in New York. Yes. And they moved to Ghana. You've done your homework. I've, I, have, <laughs> I, I have done my homework. <laughs> they moved to Ghana and birthed the three children yes. and raised you. How, how, how did your mom adjust to life in Ghana? And how did your dad, who probably had to do some readjustments, and to raise you almost Ghanaian, but with the influence of this probably proud African American Yes, yes. Tell yes, us a bit yes, about yes. I believe that she felt it was important to, um, Im not so much impose, but to make us aware of uh, some Western values yeah. as well. Uh, while my dad maybe was a little bit more retiring in terms of his bringing some of the African values, and in some ways I was never exa as sure about his feelings of about Westernization versus um, Africanism, um, and in, in some ways I think that shows in that we, w none of us speak the vernacular very well, unfortunately. Uh, I'm now trying to uh, 
uh, remedy that situation. Okay. I'm trying to speak, learn tree. So, okay. <laughs> uh, would, are you, is your dad from Accra? He's yes, Ghana? he is a Ga. So yes. why would you learn tree and not Ga? Uh, because it's easier. <laughs> <laughs> And many, <laughs> many, uh, uh, and many more people uh, speak uh, tree than yeah, ga. Okay. So I mean, anywhere you go, you can probably find somebody who can speak tree. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I like tree. All due <laughs> respect to my <laughs> ga brothers. Yeah. So I've gotten all your in-depth stuff. Now I want to just peel back to the fun stuff. Three of your favorite Ghanaian food. What are they? Fufu. fufu. I love fufu. fufu. With, e with probably with uh, palm nut soup. Uh, comes first and then granite soup granite second. Se and yeah. Se what would, which other soup? Um, light what? soup maybe not as much, but I love palm soup. I love palm soup uh, with fufu. I'm a, a yam fufu devotee, but I know a lot of people prefer cassava or cassava yes, mixed with yes, plantain. Yes. Now when oh you're having your fufu, this is, this is the real test. If you're having your fufu, are you having it with the local bush meat? Or are you having it with the cow, the goat, every aspect of it from the nail to the hair in the soup? No. <laughs> or your chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat red meat and, and so... So you don't have none of the... I, and I can, I, I can see you retching as I speak <laughs> of it, the intestines no. and the no, grass I, cutters and... Uh, I've, I've tasted grass cutter before you know, it wasn't, it didn't, you know, really make me want to jump up and sing or anything. But, um, and then, um, oh, with due respect to my, my Ga brethren, I do like a good kenke and you fish. Do. And that is actually the only one that I enjoy eating with my hands. I, I don't really like fufu uh, eating with my hands, but oh. kenke and fish, I that, really that, do. That's sacrilegious. You eat fufu with what, spoon or fork Yeah, and sorry, it's spoon. <laughs> and then you eat kinky with oh with my hands yes for sure <laughs> now you can't claim you can't we i ban you as a proud ashanti from yeah. learning tree any further because anyone who puts a morsel of poop in their mouth with spoon okay you, you can't you're okay i will remedy you. that on the, <laughs> <laughs> the next visit i never eat with a spoon again <laughs> okay, God, it's, it's been a pleasure just you know being here in your backyard thank you for <laughs> you know welcoming me to your well, home thank you thank you for coming amazing seeds